Hi, today we're going to talk about making your most of your time at Disneyland. Yeah, so there's been a lot of changes, some new rides coming, and well, we're going to tell you some tips and tricks and some ways to make your day at Disneyland even better. My name's Kim. I'm Brad. We're 626 Ohana, California. So one of the things is the planning actually now starts before you ever get into Disneyland. If you haven't been to Disneyland for a while, this may be a change for you. So you want to start by figuring out what days you want to go. And then you'd either go and download the Disneyland app or you would go to their mobile site. Yeah, you need this. <laughs> so after that, you have, if you don't already have tickets or magic key passes, you're gonna wanna go and see if the date that you wanna use is available. So you look under ticket availability. Yeah, and this is actually really important because you have to have reservations to get in the park and to make the reservations, you have to have the tickets, so. But then if you buy the ticket and there's not a reservation the day you wanna go, that's why it's best to see if it, there's availability, then buy the ticket. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about those park reservations. What are you looking for? When you go onto the calendar, the Disneyland has a pink castle if it's available that date that you want. Disney California Adventure will have a blue Mickey pal around kind of wheel silhouette. And then if you see both of them, guess what? You can go to either park. And if you see a gray a slash, there's no availability. Dun, dun, dun. So once you figure out your tickets, next thing you can look at is 60 days out, you can make your advanced dining reservation. So that's things especially like Blue Bayou tends to go quickly. Uh, you've got Olga's Cantina that goes quickly and sometimes like Lamplight Lounge, things like that. Or if you want to do uh, build a droid or some of the special experiences over at Star Wars Galaxy Edge, you have to do those 60 days in advance. Yeah, so it does really pay off to be that early, especially at Disneyland if you're trying to find something for food dining to sit down and have dinner. It's tough. So you can do those 60 days out at 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So if you're not 60 days out, don't fret, because sometimes you get lucky and just keep back checking back with the app and see if it comes up. So you'll go to the make a dining reservation or see what's available under dining reservations. And sometimes they'll have available now. So if you're close in the parks, you can hit that and see if anything's available. We have been really lucky with getting Olga's Cantina. Yep, so don't, don't freak out if you didn't get them, just keep checking back. Okay, let's go to our next stop, which is? Your parking, yeah. if applicable. So you're gonna have three different areas that you're gonna possibly park at. The first one is? Mickey and Friends parking structure. Then you have Pixar Pals parking structure. And then you have the Toy Story parking lot, which is a little bit further out. They actually take electric buses in and you do your security check over in the parking lot. Fun, now, fun fact about the electric buses. Those are the first ones at Disney's fleet for electric buses. They don't even have them at Disney World. Toy Story parking lot is not covered, but that allows for oversized vehicles. Those include tractor trailers, uh, RVs, buses, things like that. That's where you go to park. Uh, even those trucks that are really high, they may have to go over there as well. Now we have parked in that parking lot with our RV. We had an easy time parking over there. So we have camped over at Orange Land uh, RV park, which was near Disneyland because it was a little bit cheaper than staying anywhere near. And we want to try something different. So we will link our review of the Orange Land RV park down in the comments. Just so you know, parking lots do open an hour before the earliest park time. So if Disneyland opens at 8 a.m., parking opens at 7 a.m. So if you do go to the two main structures, you have a couple options to be able to get to the park. The first option is, of course, the tram. Yeah. Uh, and then there is the second option, and it's one that a lot of people don't always use. And we've done it when it's really been backed up. Yeah, because sometimes those tram lines can get really, really long and the security lines can get really, really long. Well, there is also over by the Pixar Pals parking a bridge that goes right over to downtown Disney. So you do your security down at downtown Disney instead of in the parking lot in between. Um, also, they have kind of a nice thing once you go through security, if you're going to Disneyland, there's a monorail station right there. You could hop into, you scan your tickets, and sometimes that's less of a line and you're taken all the way down to Tomorrowland. Yeah, so it's actually a really convenient thing sometimes when those part, that is really busy. Okay, so you got to the park, now what? You might still want to plan ahead that day is Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad is the newest ride at Disneyland. And they have a virtual queue. It opens at 7 a.m. 
specific standard time and you can even do that from home in the car on the way there from your hotel you do not have to be in the park yeah so the biggest tip for us is to be right on the app right at seven even before seven and refreshing so you can get that queue because those queues sometimes go really quick depending on how busy the park is now if you didn't get the first 7 a.m queue if there's still availability the ride hasn't broken down there's not a huge backup for one reason or another at 1 p.m there will be a in-park reservation so you could try again with that virtual kit that is not always a guarantee you're gonna get a queue sometimes you'll get what's called a backup so that if they get to it they get to you if not well well they even put towards they even put in there in case something happens even if you get a virtual queue it doesn't mean you're going to get to ride yeah. the ride because let's say they have a major breakdown in the middle of the day and we have seen it happen and it has mickey and minnie's has uh sensors on the track so if you lose a hat it's just on the whole ride okay not just that if you are not fortunate enough to get a virtual queue they now have the standby line <laughs> but you know you're gonna wait a little bit of time <laughs> 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 yeah i laugh because it's yeah yeah uh, another thing to know is if you have done mickey and minnie's runaway railroad at disney world it is virtually the same thing except for the queue and the very last scene so something to know yeah. okay so let's go into getting into the park okay so once you get into the park we recommend that you go to some of those rides that get backed up Indiana Jones Adventure is a great ride to get into before uh, there's a long line. That ride has a huge history of breaking down multiple times a day. So the ride times can back up if people have bought Lightning Lane for that or done Genie Plus and gotten a reservation, they might be even more backed up. And talking about Genie Plus, actually you should have bought your Genie Plus as soon as you walked into the park because... You, it's very helpful. Yes. So if you do are going to be purchasing Genie Plus, as soon as you walk through the park, you can purchase it and go ahead and make your reservations for the day. Now, things to be aware with with Genie Plus Lightning Lane. Sorry, it's this thing's well, always best with me. Genie Plus is kind of like the overall rides are available. Lightning Lane Plus means like if you wanted to actually pay for Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad and get a guaranteed time. If you want to pay for... Uh, Radiator Spring Racers and get a guaranteed time. Rise of the Resistance. Rise of the Resistance. <laughs> so be aware, you only can do that? One time per day per ride. And they usually average $7 to $25 per ride. Honestly, I very rarely have ever seen a $7. I didn't know that existed. And then if you're buying Lightning Lane to help with your wait times so you can use the Lightning Lane, those do vary, but normally we've seen anywhere from 20 to $28 a day for a lightning lane. And again, when you get in the park, it's the first thing you wanna do is go find a lightning lane of the ride you want. If you're gonna purchase. So if you do purchase uh, Genie Plus, so make sure you make those selections. Just be aware that you can make your selection for, and then two hours later, if you have a time that say, you got in the park at eight o'clock and your next ride for Space Mountain is at noon. Well, at 10 o'clock, you can make another reservation. So keep those reservations going and you never know. Okay. Also to know with uh, Genie Plus, if you purchase it, it does come with a photo pass for the day. So if you want to get your in-ride photos or family photos around the park or something like that, those are included in the price. Now our recommendation with Genie Plus is sometimes look at the times and see what the backup times are or see what the times are. Summertime is really busy, so sometimes you do need it. Other times you can go to the park on a weekday during the winter and you won't even need it. So it's kind of... Well, and I can understand for some families, it yeah. could add up really quickly. You don't need it, but we'll give you some tips if you don't use it and you want to just wait in lines, but it is helpful. Now, you're like us. You got into the park. Well, we're not rope droppers. No, we're not. Um, so let's go ahead and go what some of the things that we first do when we get in the park. Well, we look at Genie Plus and that is the times and start planning our day from there if we don't have lightning lane so we're looking at wait times in the apps on the rides we're trying to plan out what ride we want to go to because maybe a ride was down and all of a sudden there's a really short wait for space mountain or something or indiana jones so we're going to go jump on that if that's possible and like kim was saying with indiana jones is important they go through <laughs> just a major refurbishment and just reopened but it is, does have a tendency of breaking down and that's it one does. of the rides that sometimes that we see towards the end of the day it's down for a long time. So that might be one of the ones you want to go and get to right away. 
Also, uh, Peter Pan's flight tends to get really busy. Uh, it also closes during fireworks for a significant amount of time. So if that's something that you really want to do, I'd try to get there early. Space mm -hmm. Mountain, if there's not a long line, get there early. Yeah, and these are the bigger rides and it's just one of those things that they have a constant wait time. Exactly. And then also just to let you know, when we're talking about rides closing down for fireworks, Fantasyland rides tend to go down over at Disney's uh, California Adventure, like Incredicoaster goes down for World of Color and a bunch of the smaller little rides. Uh, amazingly enough, Toy Story Mania does not go down during uh, World of Color. Matter of fact, sometimes it's just a walk on. Mm -hmm. So if that's something you want to ride really quickly and you want to see like second show of World of Color or not see it at all, that's a good time to go. Over at DCA, uh, there are certain rides that kind of go into an ebb flow of times where you can go on to. A lot of these bigger rides are busier in the morning. Um, and some of the kids rides like Little Mermaid is actually really busy towards the morning, but it's one of those rides that you can go at night and walk right on. So it's just kind of getting to know what you want to go on. Really, really that app is a amazing tool. Mm -hmm. Also, um, if you have a park hopper ticket, you can park hop after 11 a.m. So if you're Disneyland and you're like, I have, want to go over to Disney's California Adventure, it will take a few minutes to walk over to the other side. It might be in your best interest to be over there kind of waiting at 11 a.m. So you get in kind of during that exchange time. There might be lower wait times at Disney California Adventure or over Disneyland kind of during the switch period times when people are going back and forth. So quick tip, if you want to make that one o'clock Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railroad, you can do it over from DCA. So if you have a park hopper, hey, that's kind of cool. Be able to if you get it all of a sudden, like, oh, we can jump back over to Disneyland. Okay, and then during your time, um, if you want to see World of Color, Fantasmic, there are dining packages that you could do at that 60 days advanced dining <laughs> reservation window on the Disney app or Disneyland website. You have to go to make dining reservations. Some of them show up there and at times I have found you can't always find what the packages are and you have to go to over to the special events window. And sometimes if you drop on there, it will actually show those coming up when they're not showing up in the dining reservations. Mm -hmm. So check on both sides and I've sometimes gotten lucky there. So the good thing to know also, the World of Color dessert party is the only way you can sit down at a table and watch World of Color. Okay, so what's next? So. When you're looking at what time to go during the year, that's also kind of important because I think these festivals they've had over at Disney California Adventure are incredible. Yeah, some of them are a lot of fun and- give All you, of them are a lot you know, of fun. And they give you, well, I can't, there's a couple of them I can't eat at, so I guess- Okay, so he's talking about Lunar New Year, Brad has some allergies, he can't eat the food boost, but I definitely enjoy them. But the entertainment's awesome. The entertainment's mm -hmm. phenomenal and they have, I love how they put in some education and little blurts about around the world and celebrations. And it's just a good, fun time. <laughs> that changes because the actual uh, Lunar New Year date changes every year. So it's based on that. Mm -hmm. Other than Lunar New Year, we also had the Food and Wine Festival, which we will link our review down below, which we had a lot of new foods this year, which was great. Not only do they have foods, but sometimes they have wine or seminars. They'll have food demonstrations, little things you can pay for extra. Once again, those will be on the special events uh, at the 60 day ADR, but it's not under the dining. So you have to go over to the like events tours area. Mm -hmm. And I really, another neat one is the festival of holidays they do every year, which is a lot of fun. Uh, we really do enjoy <laughs> actually all of them. We actually really enjoy it, It's something to go ahead and check out. It's just an extra uh, layer of entertainment at Disney California adventure. Now in our videos for food and wine festival, we do have a lot of tips, but we do find that the booths are less crowded for food when they first open versus is later in the day. Yeah, and they tend to run out of food sometimes with more popular dishes by the afternoon. So something to be aware of that can happen. With these festivals, sometimes you get some special ride overlays. Well, not just then, but we'll talk about ride overlays in general. Yeah, so you get, for the Food and Wine Festival, they changed something back to our heart that we love having back, which is Soarin' Over California. So right now that's actually currently going on from March 3rd to April 25th. So usually it's Soarin' Over the World, but originally when Soarin' opened, it opened as Soarin' Over California. So during Food and Wine Festival, they will bring it back 
to the original. So the other one that's coming soon is Hyperspace Mountain. That will be May 1st to June 4th. What's Hyperspace Mountain, you may ask? It's kind of like they do Star Wars projections all over the inside of Space Mountain and play some of the music and you feel like you're going through a space fight. <laughs> it yeah. is fun. It's fun, but if you're expecting a really dark experience like Space Mountain normally is there, you can actually see a little bit around. So it's kind of cool to see some of the inner workings. And then during the holidays, both uh, Halloween and Christmas time, holiday seasons, uh, they have ride overlays. So Guardian of the Galaxies becomes Monsters After Dark. And this is unique. Yeah, and this is usually, well, of course, during Halloween time. <laughs> so it's unique in the fact during the day, it's usually the same uh, Guardians of the Galaxy mission breakout. But I think it's like three or four o'clock in the afternoon, they shut it down for an hour and then it becomes Guardians of the Galaxies, Monsters After Dark. <laughs> and then of course they always have during uh, Halloween and Christmas is? The Nightmare Before Christmas yeah. for the overlay for Haunted Mansion, which is my favorite. And then we get to my favorite overlay, which is Small World during Christmas. So the Jingle Cruise. Mm, yep. So there's there's a lot of cool things that the park does change during certain times of year. Yeah, and so over at DCA, over at Cars Land, they switch over for Halloween and for um Christmas, Christmas and the holidays, they'll do the like the smaller rides like Mater's Junkyard Jamboree and things like that. So always pay attention to the website and they'll kind of give you an idea of the dates when these start. And it's really, it does transform the park quite a bit to a different experience for you. That's my favorite time of year. The, anywhere from middle of September when they start Halloween all the way through the first week of January when they're doing the holidays, that is my favorite time to visit the park, mm -hmm. but it is very busy. One of our tips with being so busy is sometimes check the Los Angeles and Anaheim uh, school districts school schedules because that will give you a, a idea. Sometimes it will be slower when the schools are in session than when they're out of session. And also be aware of Arizona week and Utah week. So you could go on like local sites for those schools because they are in the fall. And yes, those two weeks are very crazy. I, I'm not sure if those change every year, but when those are on, the parks are slammed and that is during the holidays and of course you got spring break that's busy and Summer. summers you just it's gonna be busy <laughs> it is but you know what honestly i like to go early summer before it gets really hot because if hot and crowded and kind of makes me a little grumpy <laughs> the other thing that might help out in the park is if you have a magic band plus so these are good both at Disneyland Resorts and Walt Disney World Resorts. Yeah, and we did a full review of Walt Disney World with them. Disneyland is a little bit- Very uh, different. Different, but the thing is be aware of with the Magic Band, you have to use Magic Band Plus. So if you have Magic Band or Magic Band 2s from Disney World, they will not work at Disneyland, only the Magic Band Plus. <laughs> I like it if you have it before you get into the park, if you've uh, got one from Disney World and then you wanna add it to your Disneyland account on your app, you can go ahead and do that beforehand. And when you get to the turnstiles to get in the ticket, when you get to the turnstiles to get into the parks, you could just scan it and go instead of bringing up your phone. Um, it'll say battery on your phone. These do need to be charged ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But even if there's no battery on them, you could still scan into rides and into the park. Yeah, they just don't do the neat effects that you get when you get off of rides. That's kind of a cool thing. You get them and during all the fireworks shows and everything else, they kind of light up and do some cool things with the fireworks show. So Avenger Campus shows also have a little special effects. It's kind of fun, um, but those do require you to have the battery as well as there is it the ability to hunt a bounty in Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. But once again, you have to scan in and play the game. But the nice thing is you can play from the phone, but if you have the phone, you're gonna be using up your battery. So another tip we come to is, unfortunately, you are gonna be on your phone. It's always a good idea to have a backup battery. Now you can bring your own bigger battery if you want, or you can do what we do with our phone batteries because it's just so convenient. We do use the fuel rods. So they have some stations throughout the parks and we will exchange them if we need to. The other thing real quick before we stop on the Magic Band Plus is they also allow you to scan in with the PhotoPass photographers mm -hmm. so that you can scan those and get those straight to your app without taking out your phone or your tickets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's nice and simple. You just put your wrist up with the Magic Band, they tap it. And it does it. Uh, I don't have mine with me because unfortunately our puppy ate ours. So I think we're going to do some shopping next time we go. 
So, uh, also... Uh, and he's fine, just yeah. to let you know. <laughs> so, also, uh, is, like you said, have your phone with you because you're going to need it. Because, unfortunately, with all the Genie Plus and everything you're doing, you're just using your phone constantly. And not only that, they also now have mobile ordering for food. Mm -hmm. So, you can go on, see what restaurants are available and times are available for mobile ordering. So, these are for the quick service restaurants and food booths and things like that. Yeah. So sometimes the, the quick, the, sometimes this is actually really convenient at Disneyland. Other times it is not. It's one of those things you really kind of just look at and judge because you could have a really place of a really long line and it's like, yeah, I'm going to do the mobile ordering and you can get it. Other times you can do the mobile ordering. Oh, it's uh, 45 minutes out and you go to the restaurant. And then there's an even longer line for the mobile pickup. Yep. And nobody in line for regular <laughs> so it's, it kinda, it's strange how that happens but there are a few places that are mobile order only so when you go uh right in front of the tiki room they sell the dull pineapple whips that's one of our favorite places especially because you can go in you can already have paid pick them up and go into the enchanted tiki room and enjoy your dull pineapple whip and that's what we do to relax. And that's actually one of the things that you, you may want to do look at throughout the day is finding those places that are cool, that you can relax. And it's an advantage that we have over at Disney World is that we can actually eat our doll whips inside while watching the show. Yeah, uh, it's kind of strange at Walt Disney World. You cannot go into the Chanted uh, Tiki Room with your doll pineapple whip, but at Disneyland you can. <laughs> uh, so go figure. Yeah, so look for those areas that may you may be able to sit down and cool off. So it's kind of nice. Not only that, is sometimes if you're in the park for a long time, you get tired, your family gets tired, and you're still doing something that's uniquely Disney, but it really can just help you kind of give you that recharge. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times we like to go over to DCA and we'll do um, Disney's California Adventure and we'll go into uh, Mickey's Philhar Magic and watch the show. Yeah. Sometimes we'll also go and ride the Disneyland Railroad. Kind of cool thing is they have some unique features that just can be seen from the railroad and it's kind of a nice way to get off your feet, maybe see a whole land, maybe go from one end to the park to the other but it's also a nice place to relax. So some of the other ways you can maximize your time in the parks is to use the single rider lane. Mm -hmm. So if you don't do the lightning lane and you have a big group and you're willing to split up, that can be a huge time saver. Yeah. Not necessarily, they will say, you know, it depends on how many odd groups are in the normal line. Yeah, and usually with me, Kim and Hayden, we're the odd group. <laughs> so we do usually a lot of times get a single rider with us on rides. So, so the Incredicoaster is one. You can also get it at Star Wars on the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. Yep, and we've done, we've actually done that ourselves before, just the because <laughs> the line was two hours and that was fifteen minutes. So you will be at the very back. You're not going to be a pilot. You're not going to be a gunner, but you're going to get on the ride quicker. Yep. Okay. So. Those are a lot, there's a lot of things here. Yes. So there are things that are closing this year. We're gonna be saying bye to Splash Mountain this year. Yeah, we're getting Tiana's Bayou Adventure. I'm actually really excited. I wish we could have both. Yep. Um, I'm really excited to see what that does. Um, the French market is gonna have an overlay to a Tiana restaurant. I love Princess and the Frog. I'm so, so excited to get these. Um, you know, there's a part of me that's nostalgic from my childhood, but I'm also very, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, also, they brought back a classic to Disneyland. Tree, Tarzan's Treehouse has now been transformed back into... The Swiss Family Robinson. That will supposedly is opening later this year. We don't know for sure, but it's kind of cool to watch that construction because it seems like what was a smaller treehouse, it seems like they're maybe even doubling it in size. Yeah, we've been watching the construction for over a year, so it's kind of cool to see. And again, so with Splash Mountain being closed and being transformed. Reimagined. Bear Rabbits uh, handing the, key, the keys over to Tiana. We're hoping to see some of those characters maybe. Maybe a little nod. To the past like they have in the past. Okay, so moving along. Um, also, keep in mind that Rise of the Resistance usually closes earlier than the park, so pay attention to the app and you might be able to get in line 
kind of towards the end of that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's less people towards the end. Okay. Okay. okay so, so that, okay, there's a lot of stuff. I know it's Disneyland is not that complicated, but there's just so many tips we have that can make your day better. So also one of the other things is sometimes it's better to go to the second show of Fantasmic: A World of Color. That way you can it's less crowded. You can get in more rides when people are trying to go to the early ones so they can go home. If especially if they have uh, younger children in their party or older families that might just want to get it. Be done for the day so that's a good time also during the daytime parades it can be really great so just a few little tips to get through yeah what we usually do and i know a lot of people want to watch the fireworks and i uh, can show you the crowds of the fireworks if you do want to watch them prepare to wait early for that spot or you can always do the tomorrowland uh dining package mm -hmm. uh, so it's one of those things where but what we do usually during fireworks is we'll go on rides. Yeah, because the li lines tend to drop during those times for Indiana Jones, for Pirates Caribbean, the Haunted Mansion. Yeah. But if you're trying to go from one end of the park to the other end of the park during those times. It's hard. Yeah, you're almost having to go all the way back around and it is hard to move around from. If you're going anywhere near Main Street, uh, in front of the castle, it's crazy. It is jam packed sometimes, elbow to elbow. And they will make paths for people to go through, but it's still just very difficult to move around. Also, uh, if you're waiting till the end of the night, it can also, right before closing, you can get into a line up till the closing time of the park. If there's a long wait, you're willing to stay up, you might go to that line. You know, park closes at midnight, go 11.59. It's an option to have. We don't do that that very often. No, we don't, because we get through most of the rides and we're fortunate enough to be magic key holders and we don't need to do that. But if this is like your one trip or some, you don't come very often, that could be a great way to maximize your day. And remember, if you're a magic key holder, use your discount. So another thing and reason we're kind of having this at the very end is shopping. Main Street USA at Disneyland and Buena Vista Street at Disney's California Adventure are open for shopping one hour after the park closes. So I like that is if I want something heavy, like if it's a bigger that I don't want to carry around the park and I don't want to get a locker that I'll get before I leave. And I'm not wasting during the day during my ride time to be shopping. And it's really actually hard to carry some of those things around the parks with you if you don't want to get a locker because you're trying to put them in, you know, the roller coasters and everything else. So it does save you. And also sometimes if the, they had it earlier in the morning and it's gone, ask a cast member. They can tell you, hey, no, that's actually over at Downtown Disney. You can go ahead and get, get there right now. So just a quick tip, but it makes it easier getting out of the park uh, with the bigger items. Okay, and I'll talk about leaving the park now. It, when you stay there to close, sometimes it gets really backed up. So be prepared to wait in lines for the trams if you do not want to wait for trams. Again, remember that bridge we said at the very beginning? So if you're parked at the Mickey and Friends uh, parking structure or the Pixar Pals parking structure, you can take that bridge from downtown Disney. So it's just past the monorail entrance and then you follow a path. You can always ask a cast member around. They'll help you tell you where to add so that you can get to your car. It's a little bit of a walk. I know it's been a long day walking in the parks, but if you don't want to wait in long lines for the trams, this is a great second option. And the truth, the truth be told is that sometimes is the faster option to get back to your vehicle mm -hmm. if you're trying to get home. So yeah, it's a lot of information, a lot of things. Disney is a great time to go to. And the thing is, our biggest tip for you guys is relax and have fun. Don't let everything stress you out because it can get stressful. So if you found our video helpful, please like, subscribe, and follow along with our Ohana. And with that, I think it's time for us to say goodbye and find, find your, your magic. magic. Bye, Bye everyone. everyone.